We're continuing our, our, our discussion of waves, and today we're going to talk about the refraction of light. Um, and I think we've all seen the picture of a uh, um, glass of water with a pin sticking out of it, and it looks like it's um, broken in half. The refraction of light is the bending bending of a light wave as it changes medium. Um, and it's going to be a little bit different than, well, I guess we haven't really looked at much refraction before. So um, what's most notable about changing a medium is that the speed of light changes. It's slower. It's slower than, I guess we're going to call it C. Um, and because of the speed of light being slower, the wavelength is also going to be slower. If we look at lambda equals V over the frequency, we know that the frequency of light as we go into a new medium is the same. Because it's the same light coming from the same source somewhere. However, the velocity is going to decrease. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And because of that, the wavelength is also going to decrease. My wave is going to shrink a little bit because the speed of light is going down. So, why that happens. Um, light in space moves as a wave and it has to do with the electricity and the magnetism in that light wave acting together. When it encounters matter, imagine those are electron orbitals around particles of air. As that wave goes in there, it gets absorbed by that and re-emitted. Now it happens very, very fast, but instead of moving at C, it's going to move slower than C. Um, it's going to move at, instead of 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, light over here in this new medium because it's being reabsorbed and re-emitted and re-absorbed and re-emitted and re-absorbed and re-emitted re by every particle that it runs into moves a little bit slower. So over here, the velocity of light would be something like um, 2 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Well, it's confusing. We don't want to refer to materials by their um, by the speed that light goes in it. So, so we came up with something called the index of refraction to tell me how much light slows down. Um, and that's, that's really easily defined. Um, I'm going to do it in black pen. In the index of refraction is the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8th, divided by the speed of light in my new medium. So this is the index of refraction. And so for this case with this medium here, The speed of uh, the index of refraction would be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by 2 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We're going to get this to cross out and this to cross out, and the index of refraction here would come out to be 1.5, just 1.5. So the index of refraction for that material is 1.5. That's going to tell me how fast light goes in that material. Um, this is going to be important when we talk about light refracting um, and, and the way we quantify light reflecting, ref, light refracting. So if we look at Snell's law, this tells me indicates how much light will bend. So if we if we look at it, let's let's imagine that we have air up here and water down here. In air, the index of refraction is one, and let's say in water, and it changes how depending on how much salt you have in it, the index of refraction uh, is one point five. 
What this means is that in air, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Velocity is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. If we took our formula for the index of refraction being the speed of light over the velocity, um, the velocity of light in the substance is going to be the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by n. So if we're down here with water, what that means is the velocity of light in water is the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by 1.5. That velocity is 2 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So as light comes into say we have magenta light, it doesn't really matter, as a light ray comes into this surface from air to water, it's going to slow down. So if we imagine it as a wave coming through here, it's going to hit and slow down and actually turn into the medium a little bit more. Think of driving a car and um, part of your wheels go into a puddle. You tend to turn into that puddle where the light, uh, because of the change in speed, slows down and it actually is going to turn a little bit because of that. And the wavelength is going to get smaller because the, the speed of the light went down. And, and we have that bit of turning right here. That's our refraction. That light turns as it enters a new medium. Well, Snell's Law gives me a way to quantify that refraction. So let's say we do this, and we come down like this. If this is index of refraction 1, and this is index of refraction 2, we have to define some angles here. The worst normal line ever. Let's say this is the normal. We recall that from before. This is the incident ray. It's the light traveling from the first medium, and this is my refracted ray after it's been bent. Refracted. This will be my angle of incidence, and this will be my angle of reflection. Snell's Law tells me how they relate to each other. Um, and for Snell's Law, we've got n1 times sine theta1 equals n2 times sine theta r. So that's my... This is for the incident side. And this is for the refracted side. Based on these angles of refraction, we're going to see a slightly different angle. Now, there, there are some trends to notice. Going from fast to slow, light turns toward the normal. And if we go from slow to fast, it goes in the exact opposite direction. What we need to think of for that is like a car hitting a puddle and being turned into the puddle. As this light ray goes from my fast medium to my slow medium, it turns more into the slow medium. The angle actually gets smaller if, if N2 is bigger than N1, which means if the speed in N2 is less than the speed in N1. Uh, and right after this, we're going to look at how Snell's Law actually works in a medium. All right, what we have here is um, a model of Snell's Law, a model of refraction. So we're going from air into a custom material. It turns out I was wrong about water. Water has an index of refraction of 1.33. Most glass has an index of refraction of around 1.5. So, yes, we're talking about glass before. But if we look at this, this is my original wave. Notice, notice that the index of refraction here is 1, so that the speed is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Here, this, the index of refraction is 1.5, so the speed, and we'll write this down, um, that's the right thing. So the speed here, velocity of light, is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, because n is equal to 1. And down here, the velocity is equal to 2 times 10 to the 8th 
meters per second because n is equal to 1.5. Now, looking at this, you can tell that the wavelength decreases as we go from air into this glass. It shrinks up. It gets a little bit smaller. Um, we can actually see that happening. And if we wanted to, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to go away, if we wanted to, we could take, oh, that's intensity, never mind. Um, as we move this, what we're going to do is change the angle at, at which this thing, this beam of light, is approaching the water. Now, when it's hitting it at 90 degrees, notice that there is no refraction. It's going straight through. And if you run, if you run Snell's law, in 1 sine theta 1 equals in 2 sine theta 2, you'll, you'll see that those angles are the same when, when theta is 90 because everything's zero. Now, as you, as you increase this angle here between the normal and my incident ray, you see, you see that we, we change the angle at which we're refracted. And, and if you look at it, you can see that part of the light hits this first and gets slowed down, and then the other light hits over here. So it has to sort of bend as it comes through this interface right here. That's why it's going to refract. Um, that's what's happening with the wave. Now we're going to look at it like a ray just because it's a little simpler to see. Now this this is the reflected ray and we'll talk about some cool things with reflection here in a second. But looking at it you can see that as we change this angle we change um, how much the light is bent through here. So we can put this little protractor right here and, and we can look at actual angles of incidence which in this case is going to be 30 and angles of refraction. When if we see that right here, it's 30 here and 10, about 20 right here. Uh, and we can look at Snell's law. Okay, and we have our two velocities. We can look at Snell's law to see that. So on the incident side, we're going to have uh, n1 sine theta 1, or 1 times sine of 30 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, or we have 1.5 times sine theta 2. So um, we have 0.5 over here, that's sine 30 times 1 is equal to 1.5 times sine theta 2, and here we have 0.5 over 1.5, or 0.33 is equal to sine theta 2. On our calculator we can do a little bit of that funny um, second sign thing to figure out the angle and when you do that you'll see that angle comes out very close to 19 degrees exactly what we're seeing here and as we change this angle we're gonna see more and more um, narrow more and more of a narrowing of this beam it's gonna bend closer and closer and closer to the normal and let's look at that right now that angles always a little bit smaller always a little bit smaller than the angle of incidence. Now another cool thing that we can see is going from something like glass into water. In this case, we're going from a uh, uh, slow medium into a fast medium. Now as we go from a slow medium into a fast medium, let's start off with our angle of incidence in our slow medium of 30 degrees. And you can see over here that my angle of refraction is actually... Oh, I did water. I meant to do air. We can see here that in air, our angle of refraction is actually... What do you got? 30 here, 40, 45 degrees. We've added 15 degrees to that angle of refraction. It's bending away from the normal now. As we bend this more and more and more, we can see something crazy happening with this refracted angle. At some point, that refracted angle is going to equal 90 degrees. We get closer and closer and closer to where it's going to be refracted along the surface. Now, physically, Snell's law, well, mathematically, Snell's law won't compute past this angle here. Physically, what's happening is we can no longer refract this light beam anymore into this surface. And as we go past that, we get something called total internal reflection. So inside of this glass, that light beam never has a chance to get out. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about total internal reflection in class tomorrow. But looking at this, 
we get to that special angle, we call it the critical angle, and we can no longer refract. It just completely reflects and we stay inside it. This is how prisms work. This is how um, looking from the bottom of a pool to the outside, sometimes you can only see a reflection back into the pool. Um, and if you want to play with this, it's at FET. Um, dot com. Type in Google FET and you'll, and you'll see a bunch of these simulations. You need Java to run it. It's a lot of fun.